Hey, today it's a very special, special moment because I get to show you my um, EMU SP1200 sampler slash um, drum machine. Um, you know, it's from uh, the mid 80s and it's a very special machine, of course, um, a genre defining. Um, some amazing people became very creative using that machine back in the day, which is very limited. Now, know that um, I love my SP1200. I use it a ton. It's the center of my studio, even though I use my MPC 2000 XL a lot as well. It's my most favorite instrument, and uh, therefore, I will dedicate uh, quite a bit of my YouTube channel and videos um, around the SP1200. So this video is going to be an overview uh, of how it works and how I use it. And uh, many videos will follow. Um, please tell me what you want to know about the SP1200 in comments. Um, please like and subscribe. Okay, this is the SP1200, the front panel. Um, I have loaded a disc in there already. This disc is actually, it says number two on there, second beat I met on the SP1200. And so this was a, a few years ago. And it's kind of interesting because it's fun to sort of you know, deconstruct a beat so you know a little bit how that works and what you can make on it. All right, so you heard that beat and um, I really like it actually. It's very simple. Let's uh, take it apart um, down here you have this button on the left side here. This actually switches between the different banks. There are four banks of sounds. You see these eight pads here, so that's eight sounds. For bank A, switch to B, there are eight other sounds. So basically you have four times eight sounds. Something to think to know actually is that the machine itself has 10 seconds of memory, right? This is very known as the 10 seconds for the SP1200. However, that's not exactly right. It is 10 seconds total. You can't just sample 10 seconds in. You could sample two and a half seconds on one, on the first pad here. I don't know, not too many people, well, everybody who has an SP knows this, but people who don't have an SP, they think they can just sample all like 10 seconds loop in there. No, you can sample two and a half seconds at a time. And you can, you can sample more than that, but you have to chop it up. And it's actually really kind of a pain to do that on the SP-1200, to be honest with you. So. The kick now you hear how crunchy that is check it out check it out i'm gonna go a little louder on it okay that's that's crunchy right something that's interesting here is um these faders here i'm gonna put them in the center even though it doesn't really matter these um sliders here the eight eight sliders correspond to the the eight pads underneath so eight sounds right so the bass drum um up here that would be for the bass drum this this slider the slider actually doesn't do anything right away you see there are three different modes on the left here tune decay uh tune or decay that's the first mode mix and then the multi mode i'm going to go into tune decay if i go into tune decay by default i'm in tune mode so here this is the, the kick but if i go up here you hear that it's higher okay 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 see what happens here that's crazy all right so here i have this uh, the kick is actually on one of the channels here, channel 9, and um, what I'm going to do here, I'm making it kind of kind of saturate the channel a little bit so it ha it's a little bit in the red, I don't mind, on the analog console. Now I'm going to turn on my um, EQ, what I want to do is really make you hear that crunchiness. So if I go in EQ, and I'm going to um, increase the high frequency, the treble, so you can hear, listen to it, it's going to get cruncher and cruncher just so you can really hear it. You hear that? Clack, clack, clack. Ooh. Now, if I go and increase even more. You hear that? Okay. Now, if I was to increase the bass and like really saturate the bass. Oh, yeah. All right. So, I don't know if I would use the, the kick that way, but what I'm trying to show you here is um, it really, really crunches things up. And the reason is, actually it sounded better with a little EQ on that, right? Like that, it's kind of nice, okay. Um, so what I was trying to do here 
is show you what's going on. So things get sampled into the machine at 20.6 kilohertz, I think. Hopefully I'm not wrong. But it's it's a fairly low resolution. That's the number of samples per second. That's a thousands of a second, right? Uh, CD quality is 44.1 kilohertz. So that's actually the granularity of the sound. That's just how it is. You can't change that. However, when you when you slow down the sound, what happens is it'll like stretch it out, right? So all of a sudden, instead of hearing 20,000 samples per second, you actually hear a lot less. So it goes clack, 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 instead of right? It's like clack, 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 clack. And you can hear it, right? If I go high, it's high. It's kind of high quality, actually. It's crunchy because it's the freaking SP1200. Ah! But um, if, I saw, if, I, if I go down, you can almost count it. It's like clack, 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 clack. And that's just the kick. That's just the kick. Could you imagine when you do this on pianos and strings? I'm a big fan of classical, love classical music, you know, movie soundtracks and stuff like that. And um, let's listen to that, that crunch on a more of a musical sample. If I go to B, so by switching the, uh, the, the actual group to B, B group has, I think it's two samples here. Listen. All right, so same thing. It's already sounding crazy crunchy. Where, but if I go into the tune mode again and go down, all right, you hear that? When it's it's crazy stuff. But so I'm gonna go and actually. Do the same trick. I'm going to increase some of the, the, the high meads and stuff so you can really hear it. It sounds like it's like a fireplace, you know, it's like, what do you say? Crepite in French. So it's like uh, it's got a crepite sound. sound. It's just amazing. And that stuff when it's like all together in the mix and you sort of like go in the reds and, and you don't care about like making things really smooth and beautiful and clean like a, you know, a PC, like a music workstation, a computer. There's something really special about it. Okay. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how the, the, the mix mode works. And so we'll switch to that. A mix mode on the left side. All these sliders now. All these sliders now show you the volume. Basically, it's a mixer. And that's what it is. Now, what I'm doing here is all eight channels. They actually, all of them have, all of them have outputs in the back. You can see them: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one through eight. And then there's an extra one for sampling, right? So input into the machine, right? These are nine cables I have. There's an extra output called mix, and it's literally just the mix out. All the channels are merged together into one, so you don't need like a big mixer. In my in my case, though, I actually have my mixer here. And the way I'm doing is um, I'm using eight of the inputs in the back, nine through 16 here. And each channel now has, if I was to play the beat, you'll hear I actually have control over the mix, right? All right, now the mixer does that. And then on the MP, on the, on the SP, not the MPC, the SP itself, you have the mix mode again, right? So you see the, your, your mix. And uh, from there, I can I can make things really loud or lower. So earlier we went to mode A, the group A, and mix. And um, this is our our bass drum, right? Our kick. You hear that? Now I'm turning it down. You can't really hear it anymore. Um, okay. So when you save to to your disc here, you save to your disc. You save your um, sequences and sounds. It also saves what the the mix is, right? So. Again, the mix up there, you could save the beat where the bass drum would be would be lower, right? So you can do that. So now let's talk about multi-mode. So on the left side, I talked about tune decay. We, we played with the tune mix. You just saw what this does. Multi-mode and this in the multi-mode, basically, it's something you get into. Um, there's two modes, multi-pitch and multi-level. So multi-pitch allows you to take one sound and play it like like a piano, like a keyboard. So here, if I go, let, let, let's take, let's take this sound here. So I go into multi uh, pitch now, if I go and press the um, setup button right here, setup button. Um, when you press one of these buttons, setup, disc, sync, sample, 
next to them, there are these numbers. Um, setup is 11 through 23. And you have things, you have basically what you need to do is press a button here. And then in this area on the right, you have like a kind of like a calculator, right? It's a Dalton's. Anyway, it's just numbers, a numpad. And um, you type what you want to do. So as you saw, when I click setup, top right corner, it says setup functions 11 to 23. You have to learn these things, right? So multi pitch is 11 at the top here. So I press setup. 11 there you go multi pitch select sound so now we talked about the second i'll do the first one this sound all right now you actually are in multi mode all right so here's the deal. This is cool because you can obviously make melodies sort of. You can make, you know, you can make different pitches, different notes with the th same thing. Also, what happens is this sound, this is one sound. This sound is actually assigned to one of the outputs in the back. There are eight outputs, right? One through eight. So it, the way the SP works is you can, on one of the output, you can only have one sound playing at a time. This means that if this sound here, it's actually on seven right now. So it I can't play two notes at once. It's gonna go. All the limitations on the SP make you put you into this mode that were not. How am I gonna say this in a fast way? I don't know, man. Like, okay, so the whole world is about like power. You have like a million gigahertz and a million. T t you know, terabytes on your hard drives and when you load sounds they're 24 bit and they're like megabytes big I don't know it's crazy but the point is here you find yourself in them it's like time travel time, like time traveling you're in the mid 80s right you're in the early 90s you're you're limited by what was possible at the time and it puts you into in a, it puts you into a corner a little bit but it puts you into a different type of zone that um, to me that's 90% that's 90% of the reason why I have all this hardware here. This outdated or whatever hardware. Um, it really gets me into a zone creatively that I wouldn't get if I was a computer right there that I, I don't turn on very often actually to be honest with you. I get in front of the computer, I move the mouse around, I you know type and look at the big screen. So great for like editing video and all that and making music. But I just, I just, I just, just feels like work to me. I just have a hard time. I, I, I don't get into the same creative space. You, you force yourself to create stuff within these two and a half seconds, max sample, not 10 seconds, two and a half seconds. And then how things cut each other like that. You really get used to it. And it, that's why Pete Rock's music's crazy. You know, just every, like, I, I have a blank, but all the people that are amazing out there, you know, large, large professor, just, <laughs> why am I not remembering everybody? Easy Moby, you know, uh, uh, Ski Beats. I mean, mad respect these people. And there's plenty more out there. DJ Clyde in France. Um, okay, I'll stop with the names. But these people, they were able to take this and just like flip it. Like, okay, it's limited to what names. This is why the music was so raw and so simple, actually. Um, if, if in the mid 80s, the stuff came out with like, you know, MacBook Pros and Isotope and Machine and all that stuff, the music would not have been the same as it is now. It just would not have been there. So let's be grateful for the limitations these amazing people had at the time. Um, so that was the multi-pitch. All right, so you can record that to make, to make your music. This is how. Okay, something that is good to know is I talked about these sounds being on separate outputs. So this sound. All right, let's see what what outputs on and change it. So on setup up there, I know this is actually setup 17. All right, setup 17. Select the sound, this one. Change the output channel two, three, seven. So I'll leave on seven. The point is, you saw me do setup 17. So setup. 17 select the sound and then change the channel you you have a lot of things to learn and it seems very um counterintuitive or there's just a lot but actually you just you do the same 
few things always. You delete sounds. I actually don't delete sounds very often, but I just keep sampling on top of each other. You do the multi-pitch, you know, multi-level. Um, you, you just, you truncate the sounds, you change the decay. It's very, it's just, just a few things essentially. All right, so what I'm going to do now is actually show you how I can change the, I can cut that sound. So this one. So now let's go and truncate that sound. Go into 19, because I remember that's the right one. Press enter. Now watch this. Now this changes. Now actually these, um, you see these sliders here. All of them here, what you need to do is mostly look at these four sliders. I'm going to put these two at the bottom and these two at the top. These are the beginning of the sample. These are the, the end of the sample. All right. And this is more, you know, this is more refined essentially. So here you jump quickly. Yeah, you can see that this whole slider moves just a little bit. So that between these two, you can really dial in where you want the sound to start and then the end up there. So I'm going to put these back in the beginning, start zero. And is at the, the very, the very end of the sound. So if I... you see that the sound is so short now, 55 samples. That's it. So when you're done doing this, essentially, then you can say enter and it's going to say make truncation permanent. This means like it's going to cut the beginning and the end, right? What was down there and up there and it will be gone if you say yes. You don't have to say yes and you can still do change it later. But if you want to save memory, it's all about save mem saving memory in this machine. You say yes. And then you'd have to resample it again later, or re-prepare the sound if you realize that you, you cut too much of it, or you can't just add, it's kind of like getting a haircut. You cut, you can't bring them back. And by the way, I cut my hair today, <laughs> so I look like a different person. Uh, I have contacts today. I have, um, yeah, anyway, I look like a different person. Let me go back to it. Okay, so I'm, I don't want to make that permanent. Say no. Um, let's do one more thing. I'm going to show you how to save to disk. So again, this is a floppy disk. Um, it's actually, I don't know if it's a high density disk. I think this one isn't, but the machine itself uses double density DD 3.5 inch floppy disks. You can still find them. I really don't mind floppy disk. I like having a disk that has my beat on it. When I have like SD cards and stuff like that, it's just there's too much into one place. It's less tangible. The only problem with floppy disks is they go bad. So you have to make backups once in a while. I don't have backups of everything, by the way. So this is a reminder. I need to do this. But um, you put a disk in there. And what you need to do is you go to the disk menu here. So I was in setup most of the time earlier. Go to disk. And the numbers are there is one through zero. Save sequence, save sounds, save uh, load sequences, load segment. Most of the time you use save sequences, save sounds. If you don't forget, otherwise you lose your work. So let's say I want to save sequence. Let's say I change this a little bit. I actually don't want to save them, but you would press one to save sequence and then it would, it would, tuk, 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 it would save it. It sounds like a propeller in there. And then I would say save sounds, which is two. So one, let it go through two, let it go through. Then basically you're safe to remove the disc and turn off the SP. Uh, small story is the first beat I ever made on the SP-1200 when I got it. I got the SP-1200. It was, well, this disc said second beat uh, on December 22nd, 2018. So probably December 2018 is when I got this, the SP. Not that long ago, actually. People have had it since the 80s, right? Um, but this, this I, the first ever beat I ever made is I didn't know how to save the sound, save the, I don't know. I basically... I think what I did is I um, loaded uh, instead of saved. So basically, I, I did not save my beat. I'll show you what that is. So here on the disk, one through zero, save sequences, save sounds, the main ones. Zero says load sequences and sounds. So that's when I have another disk here. Let's do that. Um, I have this disk here. It says classic with raw cut. It's actually 
La Falda Azul. I don't speak Spanish, so but I think that's the title. And my friend Roca, he wrote since I was in the 90s, since I was a teenager in France, and I got a chance a few years ago to meet him um, and uh, made, a, made a beat, made a song with him, actually, that's out on one of his albums. Um, the album um, is from Tres Coronas. That's um, um, his band, um, his group down in Colombia. They're amazing. And so I'm going to put the disc in there. I want, if I want to load this beat, um, I press disc, make sure I'm on the disc like that. And zero is load sequences and sounds. I press this, listen to this. So it's still loading, right? It's crazy. It takes forever, but you know, it teaches you a thing. You know, it's crazy world out there. It's always fast. Everything's going fast. You scroll Instagram, you see something you like, 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 like. It's like, this is a slower world and it tells you just wait for the thing. It's fine. You can wait a minute. Really, it wasn't that long. Okay, so when it's complete, now you're in disk mode still. And so like nothing's going to happen. So what you want to do is press this button here to go into segment mode and then press play. All right, I love this beat. I love it. It's so simple, actually. The, the drums is just, I just sampled a drum break and just played it. But back in the day, right, in the very beginning was like turntables and people were like, the DJs were just dropping samples, right? Like on the fly with, with, with the record. They're like, okay, now you have the break on the side. You got to rewind it. Another break on the right side. Just keep it going. Now, I was very little at the time. I was not really exposed to this. This is a little bit before my time. But that's, that's why... This music's made this way, right? It's very much like that. So, all right, so you can hear us right here. It sounds so good. I'm gonna crank up some EQ. You can really hear the crunchiness. Now you hear that like jungle feel to it. These machines were used in all, all kinds of music, right? This was used for electronic music, house music, all kinds of stuff, right? French, a French house, was it new? <laughs> What is it? New French, French Dutch? See, I'm French, I should know this, but I've been living under a rock. I don't listen to too much music, believe it or not. But anyway, so here. All right. Let's do the tune mode on the break. All right, I'm getting lost again. You hear that? You hear that? Yeah, you hear it, right? That stuff's crazy. If I go all the way down, listen to this. Ooh. And that's close to how uh, I gave it to Rock Hour. I think this is about the speed it goes to. If I press play. Ooh. There's something called uh, multi-level. It's huge. It's very important. Um, people like Easy Moby and others used it to like do a lot of these horns. I was go. Frum, 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 frum. <laughs> <laughs> I have the compressor on my voice, so you hear me just get bam, bam, bam. Basically, it goes like really loud, and then you can do this kind of like delay effect. I'll show you how that works. If I go into my setup mode, instead of multi pitch, which is 11, I do multi level, which is 12. And now I'm select the sound. All right, now I'm in it. All right, next time we'll be sampling because that's pretty important as well with the SP1200. Um, I hope you enjoyed um, hearing a little bit my thoughts about what the SP1200 means to me. Um, the whole thing is about limitations and creativity. Um, you know, please uh, post some comments. Let me know what you think. If you have questions about the SP1200, make sure to post them as well. Thank you so much for being here uh, with me on YouTube um, and stay tuned for next episode. Mm -hmm.